Can everyone see my screen? All right. Boop. Wrong button. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So I'll introduce myself again. Welcome, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Sara and I'm currently working as an ops associate for Organizing Core, which is a project of the DNC. Um, we um, hire, recruit, and train a thousand readied organizers to, de to deploy them into um, um, DNC battleground slash swing states for the general election. Um, what else about me? Oh yeah, I turned 24 last weekend and um, I'm excited. Again, I'm really excited to be leading this training with y'all. Um, I know that doesn't sound like much of an introduction, but trust me, before the hour is up, you'll know a lot more about me. All right, now let's get started. So I'm laying out the agenda for today. Um, you'll learn how to tell your personal story as well as learn how to promote it on social media. Um, you'll understand why we use organizing as but one of the many arsenals in our little tool belt and um, post it, your story online. And above all, like Candy said, practice, practice, practice. You'll, you might not get the art of storytelling down by the end of this training, but you'll at least start thinking about it. And, but you'll practice crafting and telling it and practice sharing it um, in online spaces. Alrighty. So I wanted to pose a question to y'all. Um, when do we share our personal stories? Or when do you think we would share personal stories? Most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time, most people are relating or reaching out to other people through connections. And usually to connect, you usually share something of yourself with the hope that they will share something back. That's correct. Um, any other um, answers or guesses? There's literally no wrong answers here. Well, I think if you uh, if you're in a group and or just with it doesn't really matter. It's more than one person. If you're talking about a uh, a large issue or a uh, uh, an abstract issue, uh, bringing personal examples of that issue into the conversation may make it more real and more down to earth. Definitely. Yeah, those are all correct answers. So basically, like y'all said, we would use our personal stories to build meaningful connections with our volunteers or voters. Um, but like even in non-political situations, you know, we tell personal stories at an event with our friends and family, when you're text banking online on social media, um, when, if you're phone banking with supporters and like, you know, anything else. All right. So why do we use storytelling for organizing? Like most of you already touched on, it goes to the core belief of why you do what you do. And by sharing your experiences and values, you can build meaningful relationships with voters and connect them to not only like the Democratic Party, but your campaign. Like, you know, for you, Candy, Moms Demand Action, Network, Nova, for the, for the rest of y'all, et cetera. And like in 2020, it's gonna be our connection to volunteers and it's gonna be based on having those set of shared values, whatever they may be, to move them to either take action or to vote or whatever your ask may be. All right, so on that note, to help you construct your own stories or for those that already have them, to help you think about it a little bit more, um, why are you all here? Yeah, and beyond the obvious, obviously we're all here because of coronavirus, <laughs> otherwise we'd be in Tyson's having this training, but like, what, what made you like want to sign up for the training today? I need to learn how to better articulate uh, my story in the context of uh, the issues that I advocate for. Mm -hmm. I'm, just I'm just curious. Of course, yes. Yeah. I think that's how as a college student, that's how I got into politics. I was just curious. I'm like, hey, like, what's all this commotion going on on campus? So yeah. But yeah, you're all right. You know, all of you are here because you're passionate for, <laughs> for certain issues. You want to kick the orange man out of office. <laughs> um, Amen. Yeah. A woman. 
<laughs> Correct. Agent, I Agent apologize. Orange. Oh, no worries. <laughs> no worries. Um, you believe in electing Democrats up and down the ballot. You know, maybe your friends and family dragged you here. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> you obviously want to flip the Senate and the Oval Office and maintain the House. Yeah, which are all very valid reasons to be here. All right. So without further ado, um, I'm going to go into some key elements that um, you want to answer or consider as you craft your own story of self. Um, I'm sure many of you like can reflect on the choices you made in life and the path you've took in that have brought you um, here today, whether that is you as a Democrat, you as a community leader, or what, as an organizer working on a campaign or whatever your own situation may be. Right. And I'm going to... I'm going to define these terms for you, challenge, choice, outcome, and ask. And I want to say that while your story doesn't necessarily have to answer all the questions I'm about to pose, you should. Sarah, you're on mute. You're muted. Can everyone hear Sarah, me? Sarah, 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 I muted yes, you because yes. I was trying to mute, mute everyone. So everyone keep your um, yourselves muted so I won't have to do that again. I'm sorry. And um, we do see hands raised. Okay. So we do see hands raised. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Oop. Are you all, um, are you all able to hear me now? Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, I, I was just gonna define these terms for you. And while your story of self doesn't necessarily have to answer all these questions, it is just guiding questions to help you at least start thinking about it. So challenge. In your own, in your own story or your own life circumstances, why did you feel what you went through was a challenge? What was so challenging about it? And most importantly, why was it your challenge? Choice. Why did you make the choice that you did? Where did you get the courage to do so? Where did you get the hope? Did your friends, family, or parents like teach you in any way to act in the moment? And then how did it make you feel? Outcome. How did the outcome feel? Why did it feel that way? What did it teach you? And how do you want, how do you want it to make us feel? And last but not least, ask. This can either be the moral of the story you wanna pass on to the audience, or what do you want folks to do after they've heard your poignant story? All right. If that sounds extremely vague, it's done like that on purpose to um, help encapsulate all the stories you have and think about your own you know, life stories, stresses, challenges, in a different way. But I feel like the best way to demonstrate those four terms is by sharing my personal story with y'all. Okay, so here it goes. <clears throat> so in 2016, I was a senior in college and I did my part and voted. Um, heck, I was even an intern for the DPVA, so I organized a little bit. And I'm sure at the time, we all thought it was gonna be a slam dunk. Hillary Clinton, HRC, she was gonna be our first Madam President, all was gonna be well with the world, at least to me, and then I could go to law school. And believe me, I was ready to go to law school. I had my polished essay, my letters of recommendation, and I even took the LSTAT last semester and did pretty well on it. But all that came crashing down when on election night, it was very clear that Trump was going to be our president-elect. And I'm sure all of you felt the same way. Like not only were we heartbroken on the direction our country was headed to, but for me on a personal level, I had to decide between, you know, putting my ambitions on hold to push back against the Trump administration or just going to law school. So I talked to my friends and family, teachers and advisors, and at a certain point, just hearing, you know, his very nasty rhetoric on the news, I was just like, and excuse my language, hell no, there's no point in going to law school right now when we're about to have a criminal in the White House who's going to infringe on our rights and democracy the moment he stepped in the Oval Office. So once I figured that out, the first question I asked myself is, okay, besides waiting till 2020, what can I do right now to minimize the GOP's influence 
and basically like stop the Trump administration in its tracks, even just a little bit. So what I found out about the amazing state of Virginia is that we have elections every year, which is so cool. So I took a job as a field organizer for For a Future, worked on the gubernatorial and delegate elections. Then I got promoted as an organizing manager on the Need to Impeach campaign, which again, super cathartic because my whole reason for getting involved was because, you know, Trump was going to be our president and I was not ready to just stand idly by. And, you know, as I said in the beginning, now I'm with Organizing Corps, um, helping to put a Democrat, our presumptive nominee, Joe Biden, into the White House. And so the years from when I initially made this, this decision to now have been trying and everything. I highly doubt anyone thought we'd be in the situation we are now in 2020. But nonetheless, I want to ask each and one of you to commit to vote this November, whether you have to metaphorically crawl, crawl through glass, you know, put in an application for an absentee ballot, or heck, just being a plus one to the polling place. Okay, end scene. So yeah, that is my uh, story of self. And with that in mind, um, can anyone tell me what my challenge was? I do apologize, it was kind of long and, and rambly. It, it sounds like your challenge was deciding whether you're going to law school or not. Yes. Um, and then on that note, what was my choice? Law school or, or commit to, you know, commit your energies to, to being, to obstructing Trump and his agenda. Yeah, that's right. And obviously I'm not a lawyer, so I kind of like, I, I am definitely committed to stopping the Trump admin. And then I guess, what was the outcome? Well, you're in the position you're in today. You've kind of fulfilled your goal of obstructing him the best you can from where you are. You know, yeah. you've made progress um, in, your, in your efforts. You know, you've learned a lot about the Democratic Party and, you know, the way it works. Definitely. And then what was my ask? You want us to vote Democratic in November. Yep, that's right. So yeah, that's the challenge choice outcome and ask model on its basic level. And, um, but I guess for the purposes of this exercise, if that still kind of seems vague, here's a better way to think about it. Um, Here's a better way to think about it. So why, so why you should care should set up the context for your challenge. Um, your choice should articulate a specific value you have. Like in my own story, I chose to, you know, be a field organizer and start organizing in Virginia politics because, you know, I believed in accountability and just rule of law. I think those are just a couple of the values that I articulated in my own story. Your outcome should explain, should explain how Democrats share this value, or at least indirectly or directly answer the question why you're a Democrat. I was a Democrat because obviously I could not stand what Trump was doing. And then, and then your ask. So honestly, your ask can be anything. It can be um, attending a virtual event, phone banking, text banking, or voting. Uh, since we're in a sort of a COVID-19 world right now, your ask right now may not be canvassing. Like even the most best story won't push someone to, to literally risk their lives to infection. But um, I guess for the purposes of, of this training, your ask can just be um, text the word organize to 43367 to get updates. All right. And without further ado, I want everyone to take, how are we doing on time? Yep, to take five, 10 or 15 minutes to reflect on your own story of self. If you wanna like jot down, take notes for like stream of consciousness or like you have your phone out and just wanna like type it there or yeah. So just take like um, a couple minutes to just think about your own story and then we'll share. Yep. This is also a good time to um, use the bathroom if you need to, or um, it is lunchtime. So like take a snack or like, um, you know, do yoga, turn off your camera and do yoga, anything. So 
Yep. And then as you guys finish up, feel free to just jump in and tell your own story. And to help with that, I'll leave these slides up. Oh, I guess a couple things I wanted to mention as you guys uh, craft your own stories is that uh, number one, make sure your stories like are real. Um, you know, there's nothing worse than like telling like a very embellished or fake story. You can, your story can even be boring. Like, heck, I feel like my own story was more self aggrandizing than anything. So like you, you can tell it in a certain way that makes it sound compelling, but don't just like flat out lie. And then don't, another thing is don't be shy. Like this is a, this is a very safe space here. <clears throat> so um, it, it may be tough allowing yourself to be vulnerable, especially if you have a deeply personal or invested story, but like, you know, no criticism. This is a safe, this is a safe space to practice or try out your own. Oh, yes. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, try to wing it with stream of consciousness. All right. <laughs> No problem. Uh, my story started as did many others uh, after the election in 2016, as yours did. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a seminal moment for me personally. I've, I've always been interested in giving back to the community. I've always been interested in doing that in many ways. And in fact, as an aside, uh, I think I met Stair at Green Spring Gardens, where I volunteer, where I have volunteered. Uh, but after the 2016 election, the uh, the division in the country was just so hurtful that I decided that I needed to get involved in. Uh, uh, trying to improve the situation and in a nonpartisan way. I specifically looked for a nonpartisan uh, uh, avenue. Uh, and so then I joined League of Women Voters. And uh, then a friend uh, took me to a screening of uh, a uh, anti-gerrymandering film. And that got me, and I went, in order to make a difference, in order to make a meaningful difference, it was, I thought, how better to do it than to start in your own backyard to make, to try to improve the Virginia election process. So that is what I've been working on. I have, uh, Ask, ask my husband. <laughs> He's, he supports me. He says hi and goodbye. And, uh, and that's pretty much, that's, that's his way of supporting the effort. But in the, over the past, I would say, better part of three years, uh, uh, we have been working to do that. And I was, the outcome has been amazing. 
I have met unbelievable people, all with uh, similar goals to make the election process in Virginia better. And uh, I have learned a lot about the state, state legislative process. Uh, and now we're working toward the actually achieving at least the first step in making the election process better in Virginia by creating the, a bipartisan uh, redistricting commission. And I hope that everybody here can, if you're not familiar with it, you can go to the One Virginia 2021 website, learn more about it. If you have been a supporter, please vote yes in November. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And that was really good. Um, uh, I'll go. Mm -hmm. if it's okay. Yep. Go ahead. To Janice. Um, of course, like most people, after the election, I was very depressed till January. Mm -hmm. And I went to the Women's March and got energized and realized that I had to do something to push back on that man. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't do anything, I'm part of the problem versus being part of the solution. Is that so, what? <sighs> um, so I joined up with a resistance group. I started doing canvassing and then I got into another resistance group that was a little more active um, for Democratic candidates. I also did my gave more money than I ever did before to candidates, campaigns. And I've stood in the rain for, in 2020, in 2016, informing people about 20, Virginia 2021. So I did that canvassing as well um, during the 2016 election. I also started to contribute to groups that fought for good causes um, and also pushed back against the administration. Um, this year, last year, I coordinated the League of Women Voters postcard initiative. And it, the message last year was to try to increase voter participation because of the year before the presidential year election is like the worst turnout. So we decided we wanted to try to get that turnout to be higher. Um, I think that and then this year, we're going to do it again, but this time it's going to be more about absentee voting and letting people who are not usually connected to knowing what's going on with voting and all, let them know that it's no excuse and, you know, where can they go to register and et cetera. So that's, we're starting to plan that out. And so that's going to be the ask is that I'm going to be asking people to do whatever they can to get to the voters polls, including do absentee ballots. Thank you, Janice. That's such a compelling story. Um, and and there's a there's a theme throughout all of these. I'm sure, like, I mean, to to answer everyone's question with a question, why do we tell stories? It's because they unite us. Like, I'm sure um, all of you know that you know we live in a very 24/7 news cycle. There's it feels like the world is on fire every day. Um, it's very easy to to be overwhelmed and like just tune out. That's why like when we tell each other stories, our own personal stories, like they can connect us more. And it, it kind of just sees how you're impacted by these issues on a more individual level, if that makes sense. All right, anyone else wanna go? This is Stair. I'd like to give it a shot here. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I'm gonna try to get this ask in too, uh, mm -hmm. if I can. So. I was really shocked that our country had come to the point of electing Trump, okay? Mm -hmm. So at that time, I'd never thought it could get as bad as it is now, all right? Um, human rights, care of the environment, and really the Republicans and their complicity. I, this is something that's upset me. But I didn't really even know at the time that, this, that I would feel like this. So I, I took action with the Women's March, and through that action, I learned not only that things could be done and that 
there was so much power in the connection of the women's summit with the women's march that it kind of inspired my work moving forward with network nova and also working with the women's summit and you know even now every day i still get this feeling that the more you know we all work together that that's going to be our only way out of there and so i highly um so my ask is please to sign up for the women's summit thank you mm -hmm. yeah and from all those set of stories i can definitely see that we have a set of shared values not only are we all like have democratic values but i hear you know um women's rights accountability um you know not just what else self-reliance sort of like putting yourself in other people's shoes empathy all characteristics that you know democrats are for and fighting for so yeah all right anyone else has a story otherwise i'm just gonna move to the next slide great right? perfect all right next slide <laughs> whatever So the next part, now that you've all um, got your personal stories down, or at least have started practicing and crafting it, um, we're going to talk a little bit about putting your story online. Um, I'm not sure I understand. Oh, sorry. I think that was Siri on my, ah, that's, that's super embarrassing. Okay. So um, how do I get that off? Oh, so sorry, you guys, that, that threw me off. Okay, anyway, but like disclaimer, um, I'm not going to go too much into depth on putting your story online and digital organizing, because honestly, that could be its own separate training on and of itself, but I'll just go over the basics. Okay, so since we since we aren't in a position to, you know, have in person one on ones at a coffee shop or canvas people and tell them our story. Um, there's a bunch of other ways we can still um, use our story of self to the to the a further extent impossible one is the selfie video so um if you uh, if you all are on social media um you would usually like you know just take your like smartphone and just record for like 30 or 60 seconds and put it on and these are just like some sort of best practices and tips so you kind of want to be um everyone was telling such great stories which would be great in person but on social media where folks like um you know thinking spans are literally like five seconds otherwise they'll swipe right you kind of want to make it a bit more concise which is tricky so some best practices are that you know facebook and twitter they can accept either horizontal or vertical video formats um, always make sure that you have light in front of you and not behind for the folks i can see on zoom your camera's on spot like you're at eye level i can see you i don't feel like awkward that I'm in your lap or just too high and um, yeah but I feel like instead of just talking at you the best way to show you is an example so let me click on this so what I'm about to show you is when I was on the need to impeach campaign this is like a very condensed sort of story of self with like an ask and everything so let me hi my name Oops. is Harry let me Full screen that. All right. You all can see that, right? All right, perfect. Okay, here it goes. Hi, my name is Hari Yassin, and I'm a resident of Lawton County. And let me just say how thankful I am to have you, Jennifer Wexton, as a new congresswoman, because that last one was Barbara Comstock, and she was just, ugh. So as a former prosecutor, I'm sure I don't have to tell you what to do when a person or a president commits obstruction of justice. So I look forward to your co-sponsorship of uh, Representative Rashida Tlaib's impeachment resolution, House Resolution 257. Thank you for all that you do, and I hope that you continue to keep Trump accountable. Hi, my name All right, perfect. So now that you've seen sort of the selfie video, um, what do you think I could have done better? Or what do you think I did well, and what do you think I could have done better? Your voice was a little quiet. Yeah. Um, Would have put the camera more at eye level. Mm -hmm. 
Your words were very clear. Your message was well thought through. Thank you. Very credible. Yeah, I right. thought they're flying to trust you based on that selfie. <laughs> That's good. I thought that you might have been able to get to your point more quickly. Yes, I was rambling. If right? If we're if we're if we're talking thirty seconds, right? That was thirty seconds. If we're talking, you know, we might have lost the people earlier. Definitely. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And another thing is I could have, you know, talked more about my story of self. All I did was say, hi, my name is Sarah. I'm a resident of Loudoun County. I could have talked more into like why impeachment was so important to me or my community specifically. Yep. All right. Next slide. All right. And then these are some examples of tweets. Again, like I, if it sounds like I'm just going through this really quickly, it's because um, I'm just going through the basics here. So um, here are some tweets. Feel free to take a few minutes to read them out. And then same question as before. What do you think these did well? What do you think there's some room for improvement? All that. This is tricky because you're addressing several different audiences and you're using hashtags, you mm -hmm. know, to do it. And the story of self is kind of gone. You that know, it's, it's um, become a serve, you know, the sometimes the medium takes center, takes too, has too much influence on the message as opposed to you as a human being. And mm -hmm. I, I just feel like there's not enough of the human in this. Definitely. Yeah, one of the downsides to like Twitter or like Facebook is that, you know, they have character limits and you can kind of sound very generic and like a bot and not very human. Is it 280 characters? Yes, 280 for Twitter. And then I'm not sure what it is for Facebook, but I know they have a character limit as well. So if you really wanted that to be a story of self, you could have might have been able to get that in the first line. Yes. By an example, maybe of how it's hurting your family or how it's hurting your neighbors you know being maybe bringing it a little closer to home mm -hmm. right so it's which is hard to do with so few characters definitely but with uh, twitter and facebook you can also do like you can create a thread on twitter with multiple tweets or just do a series of posts but again like you might lose your audience after that yeah yeah and then some things i just noticed as well is that the the second tweet about covid um, way too many hashtags. I mean, those are good so that the right people can find it, but also like it does sort of distract from my message a little bit, I think. And um, with the other one, yeah, I have, um, I feel like I tell F Farah's story pretty well in a sentence and why she got involved. I had the appropriate um, tags, but um, or the, set, the picture center, but I maybe could have cropped out her background because, you know, there's a lot of distracting pieces in the back. Alrighty. Oh, and in the COVID tweet, I did forget to tag the Democrats. I probably could have done that. Yeah. So yeah. So believe me, I'm. I even though I I do have, uh, I am young and I do have social media accounts. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in that. Um, point in fact, to create this template that you guys can use, it did take me five minutes to like get the characters down right. And even then, it's probably not as best. Um, as it could be. But, you know, in this pandemic world we find ourselves, we all kind of have to be digital organizers. But that doesn't mean we don't have to forsake the story of self totally. Mm -hmm. All righty. How is this a template? Is this a template in that it's the correct number of... of uh, yeah, so it's, um, it's the correct number of, of characters for Twitter. Okay. It's also something like, in case you guys are thinking about it, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's again not the best example, but it's something that can at least come close to the message. So what you're trying to do here is get people on your text list. Uh, yes, that's that, that's that's the ask I'm using. But for y'all, your ask can be literally anything. I just put this up here in case um, for when constructing your own stories, you you guys couldn't think of an ask. Well, there's a the little thing like it's hard the number is 
black. But if it was a link somebody was clinking, it would be blue. So it's a little hard, you know, it's a little harder for somebody to see, you know, your, your text number. Definitely. Yeah. That's why petitions are so much better. You can, if they're, if they're long, if they're long URLs, you can go to like bit.ly or tinyurl.com to condense it. It shows up with like an image and the metadata. So like, I totally agree about that. All right. Awesome. So I guess in summation, um, it may seem really simple, but like in the organizing world, you know, many of you may have this experience, but a volunteer will often donate their time or money to a campaign for a cause candidate issue or platform, but it's going to be your guys's personal story that really ensures that they stay committed to the campaign, whether committed to voting Democrat, committed to volunteering, committed to putting the work in, etc. And then as it relates to the Women's Summit, you know, there's no other option but to win in 2020. And that literally means sharing your story can mean the difference between a Republican voting Democrat for the first time, uh, moderates shifting off the sidelines to save our democracy, or, you know, apathetic people like my parents getting involved in the political process for the first time, and so much more that's on the line. And I guess, like, all of you have a very good, compelling story to tell. And I guess just don't be shy, because literally your story could, um, in 2020, can mean the life or death of another individual. Yep. And that's basically, that's basically it. Before I let you all go, I do want to give you some homework. Oh, wait, do you guys have questions? <laughs> Sorry. It, do you have any suggestions for how we might help each other practice or, you know, how have you seen other people? Of course, yes. Kind of work mean, together, you know, but to take the next couple of steps, you know, mm -hmm. can we listen to each other's stories? You know, what have you seen that's, that's workable in a group like ours? Definitely. I mean, if we were all in person, we could all totally meet up and just go around the table and like critique each other's stories. But yeah, like above every, if there's nothing else you take away from today, it's just practice, practice, practice. Like it's a, it's an art. So there's no really science to it. Like even now, like three years later, I'm still having trouble um, putting together a well-meaning story across all platforms. But yeah, I would just say practice. Um, take some notes, you know, maybe create like a little character chart, like with, oh, like, here's the plot, here's the climax, all that. But yeah, you can create Zoom calls and talk to each other, but that, that's so, how So, Bill, I think that that, I, no, I think that that raises a really great point. I mean, there's no reason that we couldn't choose a time and then all of us come in and you know, tell, tell a couple, tell a couple of 30 second stories, mm -hmm. you know, or have one 30 second story. Um, we could break it down into, you know, we could have any number of people and then break it into group, small groups. But yeah, or There's just or everybody, or everybody just gets up and then we can also say, okay, so that didn't make any sense to me, or you weren't looking in the camera, or you said, um, right. too many times, you know. And we can actually then even, we can even videotape in the Zoom, put you big on the screen and videotape, and then you have this little piece of videotape that you could use for something. I mean, might be a, might be a fun little cocktail hour thing, you know? So. Maybe so this is better with wine. Oh, it's, everything's better with wine. I have learned. <laughs> the I was hard gonna way. say maybe if we all had a drink, we'd feel better. <laughs> Not so well, shy if you've had one glass of exactly, wine. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, like, how much of politics was done in bars? You know, and why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Best conversations, right? <laughs> well, I think that, that. I mean, I also think that that's you know when you can be whether it's just relax, whether it's the wine that makes you relaxed or just like hanging out and, you know, and talking to people for a little bit, you know, like seeing my friend, you know, Heidi again and, you know, bonding again with Candy and, you know, being, you know, seeing Susan, my buddy here talking, you know, and seeing you do the really a nice job with this. I mean, all of this helps kind of, 
you know, relax people and realize, I mean, at least for me anyway, because I don't feel that I have much of that much of a story. So I don't feel that I get very impacted personally by a lot of stuff that happens. So for me to try to go out and try to pitch my story, it's got to really be more about, well, I'm having something that's coming out today that is about sort of pitching my daughter's story. It will be in our badass briefing. But so because she's in South Minneapolis. So oh. she's got a, I've got a story because mm -hmm. my daughter's in South Minneapolis, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and, um, so. You no, know, Steer, the other thing that's going on is I think people are getting over the last week, let's just say people are getting a little deeper into their personal history and their own personal story and not just a reaction to Trump, but kind of how they've been shaped as a political person their whole life you know, small P, even what, you know, where were you in the, you know, anti-war era for if you're our age? Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's, a, you know, what story means may be, may vary. And I think. That well, a lot of my story is about, that. a lot of my story is about being under a rock. And you, and there <laughs> Sorry are. Sorry to say. You know. <laughs> Is that by choice or? It's just by just sort of hoping that every, that things were going to be okay. They had a sort of always been okay. Um, and just la di da through mm -hmm. my life. So. And there are, you know, you say that and a thousand people are nodding their head. Can that be yeah. not? I mean, that's I, I was on fire the minute Trump got elected. I was on fire. I just, I just knew it was going to be a. Yeah. At an effing bonfire and and I'm still on fire I've, I've got a question from another perspective about another perspective of this and it actually I think Pat in the chat asked a question she uh, this is about uh, it's it's one thing to share your stories about in in circumstances and with people that you may have some common mm -hmm. threads with, but it's another thing to be able to apply that story or apply it in a way to people that totally, you know, totally don't agree with you oh, or yes. are in totally different social or uh, circumstances that, yeah. you know, are, are, I, have a, I have a friend in Lorray, Virginia. Uh, she lives there and every time we talk, it you know when it turns to when it turns to politics and every she said you know this is country this is you know she last conversation was this week and she she said you know she was in a in in a, a public place and a woman said she didn't have to wear a mask because she because she voted for Trump. So, wow. Oh my God! No 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 no. no yeah. but, but but this is and but Pat's. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know that Pat's still here, but Pat's question. I am. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank there you. You, you you moved around on this. Yeah. yeah. I'm so I can only see Stare and Sarah, so I, oh, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's our gallery view is our gallery view is like so. The question yeah. is about how useful is my story. You know how how you know, and, and in other words, is it totally irrelevant to certain parts of the community. I, I would definitely say that's why like your story of self is never done. Um, I told a, a, a story of self that would resonate with you all because we are in this like safe, democratic, liberal space. But like yep. for certain people, like, you know, Republicans or moderates, like stare for moderates, you would probably want to tell the story that, oh, I lived in Iraq for most of my life. And now that, it, that I'm involved, because that would make them think, yep. oh, like I told like, it's OK that I was like that, but I can take action now or like for Republicans or just people that you may not um, come from the same, you know, strata or social background is, you probably want to listen to what their concerns are first and then tie back um, any part of your story that may resonate. Because I know when I was trying to get um, Republicans to sign our need to impeach a, a petition or get Republican lawmakers to vie for impeachment, I would tie my story into, I would tie just like impeachment messaging more into like rule of law or, you know, things that they supposedly right. care right. about. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about persuasion. Mm -hmm. 
So you're yeah. always making judgments about whether you're in a situation where you can persuade someone. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, don't waste your mental energy, mm -hmm. yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um, and I say that I used to do direct mail fundraising back when people actually <laughs> sent mail out. And um, <laughs> the two issues that were, I worked on the abortion issue for NARAL. Um, the two, and I got to know the, the, the fundraising firm, uh, which also had the DNC account very well. And there were some issues that were highly polarized, abortion being one. So you're not going to persuade an anti-choice person to be pro-choice. It's just never going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you don't even waste time with those people. Mm -hmm. And the other one was guns. Mm -hmm. um, you just yeah. don't. Um, there, there are so, the issues are so fundamental to identity. Mm -hmm. that you can't even get your arms around them. It's kind of, you know, a parallel might be the way a white person really can't get their arms around race. It's like you just can't, you, you can't, you can't even, you know, it takes, many people just can't get their arms around how even imagining that there is a whole different point of view than their own. Yeah, no, I tend here. to, I, I, I sort of so, disagree so, with you point, though, Susan. No, but wait, but yeah. let me just finish. It doesn't okay. matter. The specifics don't matter. What I'm saying is, is you have a judgment to make as to whether it, the person's persuadable. And there are issues, uh, races moves. I'm, I'm, the gun issue is perhaps a better example. Don't waste your time if you can, if you're, if your energy is going to be spent spinning in circles. You don't, you don't, um, it is not up to you to convert everyone. Right. It's up to you the, to in, the you know, make a difference on the yeah. issue. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. have to, we have to be performance yeah. oriented in terms of how we yeah. deploy ourselves. I think we have to shift into that increasingly. Yes. So that's, that's all. I don't want to make it a bigger point than. No, that. thank you. But, that's, that's so true. And I, that, that's one thing you learn from being in this for a few years and then literally like just having what happened the last year for us. Um, it's been a huge learning curve and you're right. There is just the, there's just comes a point where you just are exhausted. And so as a group and as personally, we've just decided there's some things we're just not going to even yeah. uh, engage about, we're which you know, win. which you yeah. all know because of experience, which is something I had to learn from trying to have conversations or standing with someone screaming in my face about something and realizing it's literally not going to change a damn thing that's going on. So I am, you know, I am who I am, you know, 59 year old white woman, suburban white woman, veteran family. I mean, I'm not going to change the mind of this guy who's wants to carry his AK-47. I mean, just, it, it's not. So anyway, sorry, ladies to, but no, but true. I just, thank you, but thank I you. also yeah. just want, I just also wonder about maybe the, you know, we want to try to make the change closer to the middle. So it's not the extreme people, but it's the people who you think, who you've already judged that you can't talk to them about gun safety. Yeah. I mean, That's I still think Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. We, I'm, we're deploy. finding a way, we're finding, kind of finding our way in. And the next, the next thing we're trying to engage, like I told you about July 1st, is like this red flag laws. Moms Demand Action is going to actually provide an educational presentation to for us to bring to as an outreach because women because there's going to be a lot of people who don't understand what the law means specifically for Virginia and how to use it so we want to help the police and our public health department and our cities to use our resource that's a, and I'm just saying this because this is our way into this conversation and I'm now mm -hmm. sort of speaking mm -hmm. but um, the, just to be able to present that we can do more outreach and um, and make them understand that we are kind of, this is not just a partisan, a, bi a partisan issue, you know, like we, we can make this work if we both know what's going on. Cause we have to dispel all that, all that, the rumors about it and the lies like everybody else. So yeah, that's, well, that's, that's one step. I'm feeling a little more, I'm feeling a little more positive about that, but also knowing that the battle, it, it, it's just been miserable here. So we're, you know, well, I just want to around. add something to experience. Some experience is more valuable than others. Um, one I think is really interesting is Anthony Fauci. Mm -hmm. And he, he plays very few cards, but when he plays them, it's a big play and it's a well thought through play. Mm -hmm. Like this business of explaining why he's wearing a mask. You know, he's, he's 
been 40 years in in a really tough political spot. So finding like somebody to watch who you can kind of observe how they operate, who's a really good politician, Cuomo is another one, different style entirely, but just, you know, a, a, a Republican, you know, you know, picking, picking somebody, because it's not like, I think when we're beginners, we tend to get really busy doing a lot of stuff, but the more seasoned we get, the less we do, because we've got a few things we know, we know work, and we do those, yeah. and I think yes. that's the, that's always the evolution for, you know, yes. any of I'm us. I'm trying to be, yeah, I'm trying to be evolved about that too, trust me, I'm one of those crazies that's all over the place, yeah. so I'm well, learning, it's, it's, I'm learning. Yeah, that's, I mean, there's no other way. You, you wouldn't be able to if you didn't, hadn't done all that other stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, you guys are amazing. Thank you. And yeah, just on an earlier point, I do want to stress that, yes, like if someone is willing to engage in the conversation with you in like a polite and, you know, respectable manner, um, like I have many Republican friends who like we like debate very passionately about issues, but like, you know, at the end of the day, like we, we can come together. But like if like for all safety, like like if there is someone who is just screaming in your face or go Trump or they're just so far to the right that they oh, can't yeah. be persuaded, like, like don't even bother. This is mostly, I would say your story of self can help promote those moderates as well as those people yes. who say like, oh, like, I don't like, like, yeah, Trump is bad, but like, I don't care. Like, why, why should I yeah. vote? Like my vote doesn't matter. Exactly. That's kind of where your story of self comes into play and can, um, <laughs> Maybe they won't be convinced the first time around, but when someone else comes by their door or, or they do that phone call, like they'll at least start thinking about it and it'll- Absolutely. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. This was great. Thanks. Thank you, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Let me get on Exciting. here. Okay. So um, there was the question about whether or not um, this video would be available and it will be- um, it's being recorded and it can be made um, available with a link. So it won't be available for anyone to view. It will only be available for people to view who have a link. Does everybody feel sure. comfortable yeah. with that? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. all right, good. Here, do you, um, does everybody wanna kind of have a happy hour maybe in a week or so and? Yeah, let's, yeah. Try, to, let's try to set something up. Let's try to set something up. Um, I've got the list of attendees here and uh, the chat, you can save the chat. Did we have a lot of inf inf interesting stuff in the chat? I saved my chat automatically. Um, there wasn't, there was, there was, there's some. So if you want to save the chat, there's the three little dots at the bottom of the chat that says save chat. Oh, nice. it will, and then it will become a, a text uh, file after the meeting is closed. It'll just be there for you. Oh, so. do you mind if I take like a quick group picture? I no, let's do, yeah, no, this is great. Let's take a quick group picture and um, I'll get, I'll get us up here. Thank you. All right, everyone look your best. Perfect. Okay, so there's a, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it as well. Okay, I'm going to take a group shot. All right. No problem. So I'm going to just snap it with my handy snapper here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, good. All right, I've got that for us. So thank you Watch so much, out. Sarah. Everybody sign up for the you, Women's Sarah. Summit. Everybody watch for an email. Let's do um, story time cocktails or something, you know, fun. And, um, you know, and get together again. Thank you, everyone. Um, today's June 1st, so happy June. And I hope you all stay safe and well. Thank you, Sarah. You too. Good luck Thank you everything. so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Awesome.